All right, uh, we're going to start this video a little bit differently from what I normally do, and we're going to go ahead and start with the why rather than the how. Relaying your headlights is one of those situations where, uh, to a lot of folks, it doesn't necessarily make a lot of sense because why should you go ahead and put in these relays? The factory stuff works fine. My headlights seem all right. Or maybe you're not satisfied, and so you're just now looking into this. Well, here's kind of the why. Uh, I'm going to going to show basically right now a picture of a relay and really with the terminal ends. Uh, there are three different, uh, four different actually terminal numbers here. You've got 30 and 87, 85 and 86. What a relay is really is a mechanical electromagnetic switch um, that makes a mechanical connection and uh, allows current to flow through it. I'm going to go ahead and switch over to a picture of the relay all hooked up. This is going to be what you, I guess, need to do if you want to relay your headlights. You can see that on the left, terminal 86, and by the way, these are standard numbers uh, for Bosch type terminals. Uh, most all relays are going to have the numbers like this. They all mean the same thing. It is a standard. Terminal 86 is where the power is going to come in from your headlight switch. Uh, in my case, it was like, uh, you know, use an 18 gauge wire or what have you. On the right side over here, terminal 85, you can see that that's to ground. I used another 18 gauge wire. Frankly, the electromagnetic portion of this thing is going to draw milliamps, so you could use realistically about as small a gauge wire as you wanted on this. Terminal 30 comes from the battery. Uh, the closer to the battery, the better. And that's going to be 10 to 14 gauge for headlights. I did 14 gauge for mine because that's what my local hardware store had. You'll note that there are two Terminal 87s. Please also note that Terminal 87 is not the same as Terminal 87A, if you see that on a different relay. Terminal 87, there are two of them here because that allows you to run individual wires, one to each headlight, thereby not having to splice in to the one wire or try and jam two wires in a terminal to stick up there. It's actually a really nice uh, deal that comes with this Daniel Stern kit that I'll show in a few minutes. Right now you're probably trying to say to yourself, okay, that's great, I see how the relay works, electromagnetic switch allows the current to flow. Well, why is that important? Let me go ahead and flip over to this super science graph that I've got right here. One interesting aspect of lighting to me is the fact, and I, I did not realize this until relatively recently in my life, that as voltage increases, light output increases not at a linear rate, but it actually goes up uh, in a curve here. Uh, so of course mine is uh, somewhat somewhat exaggerated but at the same time the difference between light output of your headlights at 10.5 volts and 14.5 volts you're literally putting out um, like twice as much light per volt once you get up there higher up. I mean there's like twice as many lumens so it is actually a really large difference. Uh, the more you increase the voltage the greater your light output uh, again, not in a linear fashion, which is great. Cut over here now to another reason why you need to do this. Again, what does that mean if voltage is higher and I get a better light output? Well, how do I get that higher voltage? Well, look at this. As you can see, the wire length along the x-axis of this other super fantastic graph I have, the longer your wire length, the greater the resistance, and so therefore the lower your voltage. One of the keys to the relay, when you install it in your vehicle, is that it allows the power to be drawn either from the alternator or from the battery. For most cars, it's best just to run it off the battery. Straight off the battery and right to the headlights. Most cars, the battery is right up at the front of the car. So that allows you to have a lot less voltage drop across the wire, and relaying your headlights alone is going to be great for increasing the power output. Now, I just mentioned a few moments ago that as the wire length increases, the resistance increases. If you know anything about electricity, you know that when resistance increases, that temperatures are going to increase. And if you have a vehicle like a lot of older cars, like especially all of my little front wheel drive Chryslers from the 80s and 90s that did not have relayed headlights, what happens is the power has to go from the battery back into the car through the ignition switch to the headlight switch from the headlight switch back up to the front of the car 
on the driver's side, and of course across the firewall and over to the front of the car on the passenger side. That is a long length of wire, and they were a car company, so they were trying to squeeze every penny they could of profit out of a car, so they didn't exactly go overboard with the gauge for the wire for the headlights. So that equals a lot of resistance. A lot of the old Chryslers, if you go and try and pull a headlight switch in the junkyard or something, you'll notice that the connector for the headlight switch is really melted and looks like a fire just about started. As that resistance got high enough in that headlight switch circuit, uh, especially at the headlight switch when some of those headlight switches were failing and not making good connections in there, further increasing the resistance, um, you would have that. You would have that problem. So in relaying your headlights, you're going to get better light output because you're going to have higher voltage going to the bulbs, therefore exponentially increasing your light output. You're also going to avoid melted headlight switches, potential fires, etc. And it's really not too bad to do overall. This project only took me a couple hours. I was taking my time, as you can tell uh, from the video here, uh, and my coughing. I was actually relatively sick at the, st at the time still. The Daniel Stern kit does include pretty much everything you're going to need to get started. So let's go ahead now and jump into the actual portion of the video where I show you the how after we've looked at just a little bit of the why. All right, we're out here in the Shelby garage again today. Got a new project. Uh, we're going to go ahead and relay the headlights on our old 1990 Dodge Shadow. Uh, we're going to do it the right way this time. Uh, last time I did this, I think I was having some sort of a problem with them or something. And so I went ahead and uh, threw some relays in here, just kind of soldered stuff together with what I had. Functional, yes, but technically the right way to do it, absolutely not. So. We got a Daniel Stern kit that we ordered up to relay the headlights. Comes with pretty much everything you need, so that should make for some pretty straightforward installation. We're going to go ahead and throw that thing in here today and uh, probably tidy up a couple things, at least slightly, along the way. So we'll go ahead and check out the kit next. Here we go. All right, here you can see some of the components, actually all of the components I'm going to be using today to get this uh, relay kit installed. Just starting over here on the right, this is all stuff from here over that's been uh, supplied from the Daniel Stern kit. Uh, what I'm supplying myself is two new higher wattage, he higher wattage headlight bulbs, uh, 9004 style. And then I went and picked up some uh, wire from uh, my local hardware store, along with some solder, because I'm going to need to redo a couple connections under the hood. Um, Daniel Stern provided two relay blocks that actually come apart and uh, yet they will still link together. Looks nice and factory if you do it right. Got a couple relays, and what's nice about these, I like the fact that they remind you, if it's been a while since you've used a relay, um, which terminal does what on there. So that's kind of a nice little reminder. You got a couple fuse holders here, because you don't want to burn anything down by just running something straight off the alternator with no, uh, no way to pop a fuse if anything should go awry. Got the terminals for the fuse block, got a few separate uh, ring terminals and a couple fuses here. New headlight connectors, uh, already got some, I think it's like two and a half square millimeter wire or whatever that means, that's that metric system business again, I don't know about that. Uh, they What's really cool about this kit and probably one of my favorite parts is that uh, they do include some new male terminal ends that will actually plug into your existing headlight harness uh, and you run some wires off of this to then your relays <coughs> excuse me and then once you get that going uh, you then run off of the relays into the um, the uh, new connector and into your bulbs so and the new connectors do come with the new male relay deals so really the kit I mean outside of the wire that you're actually going to run to do it um, and if you wanted to install new bulbs or what have you, outside of that, the kit install includes almost everything you need. So that's really great, frankly, um, you know, maybe 10, 15 bucks worth of stuff outside of the actual kit is needed if you don't have all that lying around. So we'll go ahead and look at the car that this is going in. Certainly a very nice relay kit versus the, uh, the actual condition of the automobile, but had it a long time and I want to keep it on the road for as long as possible. So we'll go ahead and look at that next. There she blows. 156 horsepower, four cylinders of fury, the 1990 Dodge Shadow. Actually a pretty killer car. I love this thing. It was the car that got me into the 
little turbo Mopars, the front wheel drive Chryslers from 1984 to 93 that came turbocharged. This thing was a uh, factory turbocharged, uh, turbo one car as Chrysler called them. Uh, they worked out really great. <clears throat> I love it. It's been on the road for many hundreds of thousands of miles now. I've probably got uh, over a quarter million miles on it myself at least by this point. Um, a lot of stuff on this thing is done out of necessity these days and just what's going to work. It is my to and from work car only, mainly in the winter. And, um, you know, a lot, a lot of things that are a little beyond custom. You actually have to remove the C and it's just custom. Uh, again, as I already stated, got some relays over here that are just kind of flopping around. Does it work? Yeah. Is it pretty? No. Got to go ahead and change that out today. That'll be a huge improvement over what we have. Also going to have a little bit higher rated um, bulbs that we're going to be installing. These old faded housings would sure benefit from that. All right, it's been a few years since I'd installed this quote kit in the uh, shadow here. Wow, what a rat's nest of wires and things. And don't get me wrong, uh, from what I can, I can only imagine I did this out of necessity rather than because I thought this would be good. Uh, I pray that's not the case. Regardless, <clears throat> we've got the old uh, housings uh, intact and I've got some other wires and things soldered to them and what have you. I'm going to go ahead and basically rip most all of this out of here and uh, get ready to install some new stuff. I'm not sure if you can see it here. Uh, let me go ahead and uh, tilt up some. I do have uh, some terminals, these, if you've been in any auto zone, you've probably seen some of these. I actually really like these little guys. Uh, they're pretty good for allowing you to have multiple connections to things. Over the years, I generally um, have gauges or other such accessories that I end up putting in cars. And these are a little too gaudy for me, to be honest, but at the same time, uh, they do the job. They're commonly available, and since I've got a few sets of them, I just keep the size allen wrench you need and i believe that's like a 14 millimeter uh nut on there i just keep those in every car and then i don't have any problems but we're going to go ahead and try and tidy these up a little bit too so we're going to get this rat's nest out of here and see what we're working with and we'll report back all right so uh, we found the uh the high beam and the low beam uh wires that have been previously snipped from the harness for some reason uh what have you i don't really know necessarily why that was but either way I think what I'm going to do is um, just go ahead and run these directly uh, to terminal 86 on the relay. And then, uh, of course, the ground comes off terminal 85. I think what I'm going to do, since I have all the space in the world over there on the battery to do this, is just uh, run individual grounds off the relay to the battery and, uh, you know, do it that way. I don't see any reason why not just to run new grounds to the battery rather than going through the factory harness that's kind of old and worn out. Not only that, but if you kind of kind of look at this, it's a pretty dinky ground on uh, this thing. And I realize you don't need much of a ground at all for the relay, but uh, nonetheless, uh, we'll get that going. And we'll probably just run four individual grounds, one off of each relay and then one off each bulb uh, over here to the battery terminal. Because again, there's uh, I've even got a very large cavity open so I can do whatever I want over there with it. So we'll go ahead and do it that way to make sure we've got good solid grounds. And then of course, we're gonna run stuff straight off the battery from the, uh, um, from the positive terminal to each of the, uh, the 30, you know, terminal 30 on uh, each relay. So we'll get that going. I think right now I'm gonna go ahead and just uh, solder on two wires here and then carry that over to the relay. So we'll go ahead and do that and report back. All right, I've got things a little bit of a mess under the hood here, but uh, nonetheless, you can see where the relays are going to end up going. They're going to sit right there, right next to the other one. It'll have plenty of clearance on the shock tower here. Um, I can go ahead and, you know, drill in here if I want to. I've got, again, just the cutoff lines from the headlight going straight to here. Uh, I will mark each relay. This is going to be my high beam. This is going to be my low beam over here on, uh, on the right. Uh, again, terminal 86 is where the power comes in. That's going to be on the right side in the middle on both of these. And then it's going to go out 85. I'm going to go ahead and set up a couple uh, grounds now. Again, for the uh, side of the relay here that uh, draws virtually no current, right? Because you're just uh, 
exciting a little electromagnet. It's going to need a very small ground, so I'm just going to run a small ground from each one of these terminals on the right in the center, or excuse me, on the left in the center, over to the battery uh, negative posts there, and then we'll be ready to go ahead and run the <coughs> the big mamma jammas from the uh, battery terminal to the relay blocks there, and then from there to the headlights. We'll have a couple more grounds to come off the headlights, and then go to the uh, the negative terminal again, but. Overall, this is coming along really well. It looks like this project's going to end up looking fairly professional, given the fact that I'm, uh, you know, working on this old beast. So it's going to be nice when it's done, and I'll have some nice bright headlights for once. All right, again, we got stuff uh, kind of everywhere right now, but I want to bring you guys up to speed. Uh, the <coughs> fuse holders that they supplied right here are actually going to be plenty long enough to go ahead and reach from the uh, positive terminal to the relay blocks where I've got them there. I've got the power uh, going to the relay blocks, uh, both the high and low beam uh, for the, again, the electromagnetic portion of the connection there, right? Um, and then I've got the wires already set to go over to the battery terminal for the ground side of that. I've, as you can see, as I just pointed out, I've got terminal 30 all set up uh, right there. And we're gonna get ready to go on terminal 87, as it were which will supply the power to the actual headlights themselves. Uh, on the 9004 bulbs that I've got, on the connector down there, if you're looking at the front of the connector from left to right, um, it goes high beams, low beams, ground. So the blue is going to be my ground here. I did match the colors that uh, Daniel Stern already started off the pigtail with. So blue is going to be my ground, yellow is going to be my low beam, and black will be my high beams. Uh, I have thought about switching around just so black could be my ground, but uh, <clears throat> decided against taking the connector apart, just added time that I didn't need to waste, and I got a feeling this is going to be a one-time deal because, again, the, uh, the old war horse here has seen a lot of action over the past few years, so this will definitely be the last time I do the lights on it. Anyway, I've got to go ahead and now run, again, the yellow wire over to the terminal block. One thing is the uh, relays that Daniel Stern provides over here, uh, they've actually got two posts for terminal 87, which is really nice because what happens is, is I can run an individual uh, wire for the power for each one of those headlights. You need to be careful when you're doing this, especially if it's your first time working with relays and, and everything, because terminal 87A, as you'll find marked on a lot of universal type relays, is decidedly not the same thing as having two terminal 87s. Uh, different setup there, I'm not going to get into that now, but trust me, uh, if you try and have Terminal 87 and 87A feeding two different uh, headlights, you're going to get some very interesting operation to say the least. So, uh, nonetheless, I'm going to go ahead and run this yellow line over to the block there uh, to one Terminal 87, and then I'll go ahead and run another line coming off of the same block to the other headlight uh, from the second Terminal 87 on that one. And then uh, we'll uh, report back, I think. Uh, at this point, it's really just co hooking up a few lines and then uh, get a little bit closer and then maybe show you the final project here after maybe checking in another time. All right, we've got the passenger side connector ready to go on and then have the wires, of course, run over to their respective locations in the block and then the ground going over to the uh, negative battery terminal. One thing I would like to point out is that uh, you probably should cut them at different lengths and then go ahead and solder them on. I didn't do that this time. This isn't something, again, that I want going, you know, 110% on, even though for whatever strange reason I'm crimping and soldering the connectors at the fuse block, but not differing the lengths of the wire here. But nonetheless, a little tip for you, uh, obviously the reasoning, because if it should wear through a little bit uh, between that protective sheath there, you're not going to short to ground or anything like that. So that's kind of a little tip for me to you. Okay, I obviously don't have the relays 100% uh, in their uh, final location there. I wanted to go ahead and fire up the lights first to make sure they work. And they really do, honestly. Uh, wow, what a difference between these and the, um, the last bulbs I had in here. Quite a bit brighter. Um, and then, of course, going to need to polish up these lenses. Maybe I'll get that going. Let me go ahead and... Uh, flip the brights on here so you can see that there is uh, bright functionality. There we go, we got the brights totally working. So this project is in 
outstanding success so far as you can see off to the right there uh, the wiring looks fairly well factory there I could have uh, put some loom on it or something like that but uh, it actually does tuck back in there a little bit better once I uh, get that block place down there where it's supposed to be so I do that and I'm basically going to be good to go here so really thrilled about these lights can't wait to see how they do I think I'm going to go out to take them for a spin tonight um, actually going to go ahead too I think and uh, explain a little bit better earlier in the video how uh, how this is all beneficial I guess I haven't really talked about that either so uh, I'll be throwing that in so that means I'll be probably cutting this out so catch you later